Hello guys and welcome back to the show. In the last video tutorial, we saw how to dockerize a Flux application. In this video, we will look at how to also dockerize a React application and then make a fetch request from the React front end to the Flux backend. We'll be doing this using Docker Compose. Let's get started. So in the last video, we created a Docker file, an app.py file, and a requirements.txt file. We need to do a bit of cleanup before we can start. So inside of this directory, what I'm going to do is to create another directory that I'll call server. So I'll say mkdir server. Now that I have the server created, what I'm going to do is to move these three files into the server directory. So what I'll do is to copy all these three and then move them to the server. So if I do ls, I only have server, okay? So now let's cd into server and see if we can still run the app.py file. Now, if I do docker images, I need to build my image. So I'll say docker build dash t, I'll call it Python app and I'll say dot. Okay, now that everything has been built, what I'll do is to run the application. So I'll say docker run dash p Python app like so, and I'll go to localhost 80 just to check that everything is working before I create the React app and then dockerize the React app. So we know that the Flux app is still working. Now let's create the React application. I'll stop the server. I'll go back to the root of the application. So into Docker Flask, then I'll create a new directory, which I'll call client. So I'll say mkdir client like so. And then I will cd into client. And the next thing that I'm going to do is to create the React app. So I'll come to create React app. Then I'll copy this npx create React app, my app. I'll go into the terminal and I'll paste this here. Then I'll hit enter like so. This should create a React app named my app. Okay, so we have everything completed. So what I'll do is to open this in Visual Studio Code as well. So I'll say code dot. The first thing I'll do is to remove this. And then I will create inside of the root of the React application, a file called Docker file. So I'll cd into my app and I'll say touch Docker file. Inside of this Docker file, the first thing that I will do is to get a Node.js image. So I'll say from node, I'll go with 14 and then sling. The next thing I'll do is to create a working directory. I'm not going to explain into details what these steps are because we already covered that in the last tutorial. So I'll create a working directory. Then what I'll do is to copy the package.json file into this directory. So I'll say copy dot because it is in this directory, I want to copy the package, the JSON to the working directory. Okay. All the commands that come after work there will be inside of this app directory. Okay. I'll do the same thing for the yarn lock file. So I'll say copy dot yarn dot lock, and then I'll run npm install to install all the packages inside of the packet.json. So I'll say npm install. The next thing that I'll do is to copy everything that I have in here. Okay. I'll copy everything inside of the app directory. So I'll say copy dot to dot, and then I'll expose port 3000. So I'll say expose 3000 and 3000 will be the port in the container. When I run the image, I'll get a container and the container will have a port 3000, which is the port that I can connect with to communicate with the React application. And then I can say CMD NPM start. The last thing I'll do is to come over here and then for now, just say H1, it works. Okay. And then I'll go ahead and build an image of this Docker file. So I'll go to the terminal. 
and I'll say docker build, I'll give it dash t, react app dot So now that this has completed, the next thing I'm going to do is to say docker images. And as you can see, we have the React app image. So now I will say docker run, I will specify the port, and I'll say I want to map port 3000 to 3000, and then the name of the image. So I'll hit enter. This should now start the development server. I'll go on localhost. 3000 and as you can see it says it works so we now know how to dockerize a react application now let us connect the flash back end to the react front end we will do this by using something called docker compose now the question is what is docker compose docker compose is an orchestration tool it is used to manage multiple containers within an application let us now see how we can use docker compose to manage the client, which is the React application, and the server, which is the Flux application. I will CD into the root of my application, and over here, what I will do is to create a file called docker-compose.yaml. So I will say touch docker-compose.yml, like so. I'll open this in Visual Studio Code. Inside of this docker-compose file, what I will do is to state the version of Docker Compose that I want. Okay, so I'll say version, and the version that I want is the version 3.9. So I'll say 3.9, like so. The next thing that I will do is to state the services that I want. Now, services are basically the containers that I would like to manage. Okay, and in this application, I've got two services. These are React app and then the Python app. Okay, so what I will do is to say services, I could simply say that one of my service is the image and I could specify the Python image and that is it. But that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to build the Docker file from the server directory. So I will say build and I will build from dot slash server, which is this directory. Okay, because this directory contains the Docker file. Okay, so I'll say server, and then I'll specify the port. We are using port 80 on our local host to connect to port 5000 in the container. Okay, so I'll say ports, and this is an array. So I'll say port 80 to port 5000. Then I'll specify the volumes. And as we saw in the last tutorial with volumes, whenever we make changes in our file system, the changes happens inside of the container. So I will say volumes and the volume will basically be dot server. I want to map server to slash app. Okay. So I will say this slash and then app. The next thing I'm going to do is to specify an environment variable. An environment variable that I want is environment. It's flux env and I want to set this to development. So I'll say development. I think I forgot to specify over here that the services that I want is a server. So I will, and this can be any name that you want. Okay. I just want to name my server. So I'll say server over here and then I'll move this one space up like so. The next service that I want is the web service, which is for the React application. So I will say web. And what I want to do is that I want you to build from my app, okay? Because inside of my app, I've got the Docker file. So I will say the build and the build is dot slash client slash my app. The port is basically port 3000, which is my host to port 3000 inside of the container. For volumes, I'll specify that I want my client. So basically this path if I go to the Docker file, I want that to be mapped to this one. Okay. So I'll copy this and I'll paste that over here like so. And then I will say that this web application over here will depend on the server. Just so Docker Compose will know how to manage the starting of the applications. So I will say that depends 
and this depends on server okay so this server over here and that is it i've basically used docker compose to manage two containers now how do we create a container from these images well we can use the docker compose app command to run everything in here so i'll go to the terminal i'll do docker then i will delete this image i'll force delete this then i also delete the react app but before i run docker compose what i'm going to do is to let the flux application return a json object that i can then use in the front end so i'll go to the app.py file and instead of saying hey chris hey what i'm going to say is that i want to return an object which has a key called channel and the value is called this show and another one called tutorial which has a value called react flask and docker like so now i'll go into the react application and create a component directory called components then i'll create another directory over here that i'll call channel then i'll create a file called channel.js inside of channel.js what i'm going to say is that import react then i'll say export and i'm going to say this is a function that for now returns a div which has h1 and another h1 what i'm planning to do is to pass a prop to this component i'll call the prop data and then i can say data dot channel then i'll say data dot tutorial the next thing i'll do is to go into my app.js file i'll import use state and use effect from react then i'll import my channel component from this channel file like so then i'll create an initial state so i'll say const initial state and then set state which is use state like so then i'll pass it an empty array the next thing i'm going to do is to say use effect fetch from a url so i'll say const url so i'll pass a url here dot then response if the response is successful so if response if this is 200 what i want you to do is to return the response.json so i'll say return like so and then i want the data so i'll say dot then the data will be set state then i'll pass it the data like so the last thing i'm going to do is to pass this component over here so i'll say channel then i'll pass the data as a prop and that will be the initial state like so and as you saw i am extracting the data from the prop object and then using it in this component here so now what i need to do is to go to the server change this to slash api because i'm basically using it as an api and then run the application for now let me make this a string okay we don't care about the url for now let me make this a string and let's see if it works so i will go to the terminal and now instead of this command what i will do is to say docker compose and then app like so so basically this is handling everything for us it is spinning up the react container and the flask server so we now have the react application running so what i'm going to do is to go to the browser and then hit enter but as you can see nothing is working okay i'm not able to make the request to the back end someone might say that this is because i am using an empty url fair enough i am using an empty url so what i would do is to go back to the terminal and then copy this and then i'll go to the react application then i'll say this but instead i'll use 80 like so so if i copy this go to the browser and then paste this here then i do slash api i get the show react flask and docker okay so i'll go to the react application and say api now if i check the browser as you can see i am getting a course error but as you can see i'm getting a course error so how do we resolve this and how do we make our react container talk to our flask backend container well we can do this by setting a proxy inside of our application so let's try and set a proxy inside of the react application so i'll go into the package.json then i'll say proxy 
and I'll select the proxy to localhost port 80 and I'll paste this here like so. Then I say slash API. This should work, but it's not working. And the reason why it is not working is because inside of the package.json, we have 0 0.0.0.0. 0 .0. We need to change this to the name of the service, in this case, server. So I'll copy server, I'll go to packet.json and then I'll paste this over here, like so. So now, if I go to the browser, I have this. So this is how we connect a React front end to a Flux back end using Docker. So a summary of what we did today, we created a client using React, then we created a Docker Compose or YAML file. We specified the services, which in our case was the Flux application and the React client application. We named the Flux server, server, and we named the React application web. Then in our packet.json file, we created a proxy and set the proxy to HTTP Instead of localhost, we changed it to the name of the server and then we changed the port from 80 to 5000. This could be 80 if you want to, but I changed it to 5000. I hope this makes sense. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial.